Hi, and welcome to Happy Fisherman Adventures. I hope, I dream, I wish to catch a big fish. And I do it when I can. I'm a happy fisherman. And I do it when I can. I'm a happy fisherman. Today's episode we are going to dedicate to local tuna and kingfish. Yeah, as you guys seen, uh, Sharkman charters and all the other charters doing really well on kingfish at the moment. There's few tuna around. But, you know, it's funny because I heard this story so many times and it's unbelievable. They basically one day it's the best charter in the world because they caught few fish. The very next day they don't get any fish, well, that's the worst chart in the world. Don't judge it like that because there was times when we got out, well, not once, so many times, we could actually gaff the tuna, but we could not hook them. They just don't want to eat. It's bad luck. So we're going to try and get, actually, Mick to explain a little bit what to do in those situations. So we are starting the episode with some tips and tricks from Mick. Well, today, mixed tricks and tips are going to be about tuna, more tuna, local tuna, and how to catch tuna. So everybody deserves to catch tuna. And they're great fun to catch, and I wish I had all the tricks and skills to catch these fish, but there are days these tuna will even beat you know, seasoned uh, professionals out there. The trick is to keep going and keep trying and keep moving different styles of lures and techniques until you can try and get them to go. There is no one golden rule to these fish, especially these local fish off the heads here at uh, between Ocean Grove and Point Lonsdale and places like that. We just have to try a large range of techniques. The most common? Most common ways of doing it, most people are used to using uh, your diving lures and I know you love your Lumo and your Halcro King Brown, exceptionally good lures. And the good thing about a diving lure, they create a lot of attention through the water we can trawl them slow you know there's certain models we can run at high speeds as well and we can adjust where we're sitting them in the water column so it's a really good technique of, of searching and looking for fish we can then use obviously skirts have them running on the surface we can run small skirts big skirts in close out far and all these different lures have different positions that they like to be working at best so it's not just a matter of walking into your local store and grabbing a nice shiny lure and expecting it's going to catch a fish with it for you. It's not going to do that. Half the battle is is making sure you place that deep diver in the position that it's designed to swim at best or putting that skirt in the right position for it to swim and do its job the best because if that lure is not swimming and working for you, that fish is not going to come up and uh, necessarily go and eat it. So we need to make sure our lures are swimming properly, you know, whether it's a skirt, a diving lure, your stick baits, your poppers, Soft plastics for that matter as well. They have to be swum the right way. And learning how to use that lure will certainly help. Yeah, so basically, normally we would start just trolling yeah. them. And if we see the fish on the surface and it doesn't work. Yep. Well, then, as you said, you've done several passes over these fish and you've got fish swimming around your boat and they're not playing the game. Well, this is where we need to, to mix it up a little bit, where we can put sinking stick baits on or floating stick baits, depending on where these fish are sitting. We can use things like our poppers, Maria poppers and stuff like that. And we're talking about the popper. For example, this particular one that Maria does do, it's a pop queen, very popular for our kingfish, very popular for our tuna as well. But it's not just a standard blooping popper. This one lure, I can do two or three different jobs with it. And this is what we were talking about before, is learning what our lures can and can't do. So I can bloop that across the surface like a traditional lure. I can long sweep it. And this particular lure will come underneath the water, swim and then pop back up. If I've got it working it onto a stiffer rod, I can do a walk the dog motion and that will walk across the surface of the water log and, and try and get a bit of commotion and, and action that way as well. So it also comes back to having the right lures and the right colors, but again, learning how to swim these lures. I said that one lure can do three different jobs. So I don't have to have 47 lures in my box. I can limit it down at times and have one or two lures that will allow me to do a couple of different approaches. The other thing that's really important on these fish at times is matching the hatch. So you've seen it out there where they're cruising around, they're feeding on small baits and things like that. It's known 
point throwing big baits at them all the time because they won't hit it. So finding little lures, you know, like this little Amagari, for example, is a sinking stick bait, I can drop that down and twitch and work it and attack those fish exactly where I want them to, to be working them. But the key thing about this little particular little lure here, it weighs 50 or 48 grams. So it allows me still to cast and, and cast that distance and work that lure from a distance because we don't want to necessarily spook these fish by getting on top of them. It allows me to cast and work um, small baits that have got the weight to get to where I want to go and fish them. We've seen fish left, right and centre. And as I say, most popular way, we run two divers, two skirts, mm -hmm. and you know that's how we normally catch them. But if they don't want to eat, as I say, we did all this mix and match. Yep. And finally, you find a technique that works, just repeat it. Correct, that's exactly right. And there are days, you know, putting a teaser bar out or a, a daisy chain to add that little bit of attraction. There are days where that will promote that catch or stir those fish up to come back and work for your spread and grab whatever lure you, you, you've got there. There's no hard and fast rules. And what worked today may not necessarily work tomorrow. So don't put the blinkers on and go, look, I've got it all sorted out and this is the way I'm going to fish. We need to be able to adjust to what's going on out there as well. Putting time and learning all this stuff, it's actually learning on the job. Correct. Yeah, very much so. so the, as I said before, we're, there's no easy way with tuna. They've got a mind of their own, and the kingfish as well, for that matter. They march the beat of their own drum at times, and there's, we've all been out there and we've seen acres of fish. We can't get them to turn on. We wait for tide changes. We wait for you know, the wind to come up and put a bit more chop on there. We're going through our lure box looking for the lures. Sometimes, you know what, we're, unfortunately, we're going to come home empty-handed. Facebook and some of these things make it look really, really easy. Unfortunately, there's a lot of hard work that goes on to get out there and catch these fish as well. Well, I, I'll have to be honest. We went three times. We could gaff them, but we couldn't catch them. Even pilch it. Even, we tried everything. And then you go the next morning and we got like four in um, three, three minutes. Yeah. And we got out. So... That's exactly, that's tuna fishing. Yep. You have to put our strolling back, that's one there, thing. There's a lot of hard work involved. It's not a give me every time you go out, no. But again, as you guys do when you're out there fishing, you're trying all these different techniques, trying to find out what's going to work and open that key to success on, on the day. But we've got to be trying and working the whole time. Awesome. One thing, a lot of people going down to a lot of to beaters and that, mm -hmm. what would you suggest? What length road and what kind or, of size beater? Yeah, again, it all depends on what we're, we're sort of doing. For the guys who want a sports fish, we can drop down to, you know, 6,000 size reels and, you know, 30-pound braid, nice light casting rods. We can go and put the big gold tigers and, and things like that out if we want to do the heavy trolling for the big fish. We can also go and put your... Lucky now, your Stellas or your big Saragosas, your big pens, your big heavy-duty reels, and there's gear that will cope with that. No problems at all. The technology really works. Technology's went. there, and again, rigging it the correct way and, and running the gear the right way will help you catch a fish. Too easy. It is early in the morning, and we're leaving Ocean Grove in search for some tuna. Just remember, this river is shallow, so best time to navigate is in the middle of the tide. If it's too low, you may damage your skeg. If it's too high, you may hit the bridge. As we got out, it wasn't too bad. We were on the way to 30 meter mark. The sun was rising and we did sand up some fish, but no action. We kept on trolling, we seen few boats around, but we didn't see anybody hook up. Then we saw some birds and some tuna jumping, but not take us again. We did try hard, we circled around them, we did everything possible, but just we could not hook one up. After a while, we gave up and we took off towards the fall ground. In this area, we seen few birds flying around and then in no time, two rods took off. 
Mima quickly grabbed one rod and started fighting the fish while I was moving everything out of the way. In the meantime, I did leave my engine in the gear so the other rod would not tangle. Then, as Mima had the fish close to the boat, I grabbed the gaff and I was ready. No long after, we had our first tuna in the boat. Then Mima quickly grabbed the second rod and she repeated the same process again. The fish wasn't that big, they were about 12 to 15 kilo each, but fighting them on the actual overhead rod and just like a 10,000 Saragossa, it's a beautiful feeling. This fish was fighting a little bit, but Mima was in control. As you see, the weather was on our side. Both fish took Halco deep divers. One was on a pilchard color and the other one was on a lumo. In no time, we managed to gaff the second fish and high fives all around. Well, that was the only action on this day. Well, what would you tell people, I'd give them the best advice you can think about catching tuna? In the respect of getting out there, look, always get some local advice from your, your local store before you head out because we've all got an idea where these fish are. So we can certainly narrow down your search areas. So we can sit there and narrow that down and go, hey, guys, we need to look in this area. That's the first thing. Get that local advice and find out where the fish are because we don't want to be doing laps all over the bay, out through the heads and looking for fish. It's a big, bad area out there. We don't need to burn fuel unnecessarily. So we, we can cut down when we do that. But when we're out there on the water, there's things to look for. We look for life. We might see some birds working off in the distance. What's going on over there? Let's go across and have a look. No point trawling where the fish ain't. All right. So, and a lot of guys will do that. They'll get on the water, pop the lures in the water and we're off and going. Great, mate. And we do occasionally get lucky and you get a blind strike and things like that. But if you can find activity, where are the seals feeding? Where are the dolphins? Where's the bait fish hold up? Look for that life, because where there's life, there's food. Where there's food, there's activity going on. So that's what we want to go and try and do, is look for life. If we find life, nine times out of 10, we can find the fish. Okay. Getting them to bite, though, that's the next trick. But at least we're tracking these fish down where they, where they are anyway. So you know that you're in the right area. You know that you actually, yeah. there's something's going on. Look, a lot of people say, oh, if it's dolphin, just move away. But it's actually not right. Yeah. It, underneath the dolphin, so yeah. obviously tuna. No, we don't want to get on top of the dolphins or do anything, or the seals for that matter. But if they're in that general vicinity, they're there because there's food there. So let's look. Well, with the rule number one, do not go through the patch. No. Always go around. Work That's how we got them because you go to the patch, you spook them, everything goes away. That's it. You lost. Correct. 99% of the time, that's it. You're not going to get a strike. But you go around the, the actual live. Work around the fish or work around those uh, bait schools and workups. Sometimes, especially if you've got the area to yourself, which is nice, instead of cutting through it, you can drop your lures and sit them further back and take a wider arc. So the boat's well and truly away from that school of fish. And so our lures are then going to cut through or around that edge of that working uh, bait, um, bait school. So it's not always a matter of rushing up to it 100 miles an hour. There are techniques where that does work. But nine times out of ten, we want to try and keep these fish up high and work them and, and keep that activity going. Well, guys, you heard it. Don't just drop your lures and start trolling. Find some activity. Find some birds. Find some ripples. Find some, find some fish first and then just do rounds around them. Simple. And if that's not working... Hit the direction and start looking. Start, yeah, well, uh, honestly, we actually found the patch, they didn't want to fit. We went yeah. to another patch, they didn't want to fit. The third one we found, it worked. That's it. Yeah. Always so working. It just, it, it, we did spend some time looking for them, but hey, it was awesome. Well done.
In this video we are back on our way to Ocean Grove and this time we had with us Alice and Abel. We did miss the first light, so we were fishing the gentleman's house. The day was just exceptional. Abel is our free diver and if tuna was not on the bite, we had a backup plan. As per side bridge rails, we were close to high tide and this was the maximum height that I would go through under this bridge. After the bridge, make sure you navigate towards the restaurant. And as you see, we were blessed with this beautiful weather. The plan was to go and find tuna, and if the tuna is not biting, Abel would go and do some spear fishing for us. We got in 40 meter depth and our friend Brett with his crew was already there and trolling. Sometimes it's a good idea to have someone step up and try to spot some activity. Birds, splashes or even unusual ripples in the water. Today there was unbelievable amount of orange algae in the water. Not far from us, my friend Marco Shark Manchares was scanning this area as well. As we didn't see any activity, we took everything out and started searching. We were still in the 40 meter line and seen some ripples on the surface. I casted my favorite popper, made by Maria, and I seen fish chasing it. I knew that's not a tuna, that's a kingfish, and no long after. I do use quiet light gear, so this was an awesome fight. This fish put up a nice fight actually, but Abel was in control. Time, I was getting my hookum net ready and we landed this kingfish that was hooked actually okay. in the back. This fish measured 59 and a half centimeters so it just didn't make the limit. We let this one go and we went close to Brett and the crew telling them that Kingfish is around. Then we took off and tried to look for some more ripples. In our next video we are going to continue with our kingfish session and you will see how TB of the treble in his leg. Doesn't matter how much experience you got, you always be careful. You have to be careful as, yeah, it can hurt. Well, we kept searching around and looking for some nice ripples or any action. We did spot some action and we saw fish jumping so we start throwing our poppers. 
my first cast, and this Maria Popa just done amazing work. There was kingfish all over it. And before you know, I was on. This time it was Alice's turn to fight the fish. As Alice and Abel just had a little baby girl, Alice was very brave to come out and do some fishing with us on open ocean. She was fighting this fish, she was smiling, and yeah, she was in control. Well, this fish was a little bit bigger, and this time it was hooked in the mouth. Well, sometimes, doesn't matter how much experience you got, doesn't matter how careful you are, you still cop it. So this fish managed to actually shake the lure straight in my knee. Well, we're not gonna show what happened, but uh, Dr. Mima took care of that. And uh, yeah, I was patched up pretty quick. Unfortunately, the time that we spent to pull the hook out of my leg and then patch it up, we actually lost the fish. Some algae were really, really concentrated, so you can see this orange patch in the water. It looked very dirty, but unfortunately no fish. As we were on the way out, we actually scanned some more fish, but they were really deep down. Well, someone did have some fun here. It was the seal. By around lunchtime, we were already on the way in. This time, it's in the middle of the tide, so the bridge wasn't an issue. When we got out, we had a bit of a chat with Brett and the boys, and that was it. It was time to secure the boat, get ready, get changed, and then go home. All in all, an amazing day out, an amazing experience and a beautiful adventure with friends. Thank you all for your support. Thanks for purchasing our t-shirt. And uh, yeah. Uh, next week we're going to have quite a few people, quite a few photos, quite a few pics of what we received lately and some beautiful catches. And even an 86-year-old man catching his personal best trout. Thank you for watching and thank you for subscribing to our YouTube channel. We will see you next week. I hope, I dream. I wish